question. And so, uh, you know, when when you say, "Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize for using you know binary drivers," it's like no, it's just almost every even even Debian comes with quite a few of them. So, I mean, I mean, the reason why I apologize, I think we discussed many times the benefits of free and open source software, and it's undisputable the uh, the benefits that using uh, free and open source software is. Unfortunately, the problem being is convincing other people that this is the case as well and showing them that the free and open source is the better route to go and until that happens I use a mishmash of free and open source and uh, proprietary software and it works very well because I have to balance my belief in free software with my need for something uh, like a proprietary driver or uh, it might even be a piece of proprietary software so I I sort of strike a balance in the middle I don't think there's anything wrong with that Um, I I don't know how you uh, how you feel about uh, no, I, I wanted to clarify something. I, I had this question come up in an interview, uh, and it went like, are you an idealist or a pragmatic person when it comes to free software? And my answer, I'm basically I'm a bit of both. I'm trying to use free software, but I'm also using it for practical purposes. And It's not like you choose either side. And the only people will have you believe, and I, I don't think, hopefully, people listen to the show don't think it's, it's, that it's, it's true that I'm some sort of, uh, uh, you know, sticking to some kind of a uh, extreme or zealous or something standard where where I should be ashamed to use proprietary software. Uh, the, usually the those who try to paint me as a person who's like an idealist who hates proprietary software are those who are trying to demonize me. And, and I, I kind of sense, sense sometimes that you maybe actually believe them to an extent. No, it, so, I, mean, I, th- I think the I think the, the the ideal position to be is that you don't use proprietary. Well, especially if it's equally good, uh, yeah. and, and very often we do have that. So for, for example, yeah. Firefox, Chrome, and Internet Explorer. Exactly. So I don't have a reason to use Opera. I, I just don't. You know, it's when I be, it might be quite as good as Firefox, but it's just not free. So I'm just saying, oh, thanks very much, but no, got something and, um, else. I think, I mean, we've, we've discussed this before anyway, and I think at the end of the day it comes down to what is the best software. You're not going to settle for, for a free and open source software if there is, if it's inferior and doesn't do the job that you require it to do. Um, it's not contrary to what uh, certain people on the internet will make you believe. There's not millions of Linux users sitting at home using software that's completely, uh, Hub, hum, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hobbled, Hello. just so that they can that just so that they can advocate Linux. It's um, a case of use the best software that is best for you. And and, first uh, users, mostly developers, and they yeah. obviously do have a reason to use something that's open mm-hmm. and free, and all sorts of reasons. The reason you still have, I think, distributions like Gentoo, and some people even choose uh, Linux from scratch, is because they do want access to the source code. They don't want to just get a new package and say, oh, it's just a binary and just toss it in the right place and it just links automatically to everything. They want to like see the and play with the code and say, oh, how is this driver? How is it being done? And they kind of look inside, oh, that's kind of nice. And maybe they even change a few things and, uh, and then upload the changes and show, you know, their geek friends, you know, oh, look, you know, I've just fixed the uh, copies bug and, you know, and now I have three desktops instead of this desktop. So now it's showing in yellow and, you know, things like that. So, so Because they know how to do that. They know how to do that. They enjoy doing that. They enjoy hacking on things and then saying, look, I have my fork and I have my package that's based on that. So so going through the code makes sense to a developer. They don't like just uh, having this botnet called Windows Update, just, just tossing files back and forth and then the machine doesn't boot and doesn't tell you why or how to fix that. It just says, well, reinstall Windows. They just won't take it. So that's the... For them, it's a good system because it's because they know how to screw. I mean, as we are doing this show, for example, in the background right now, I'm encoding uh, 30 videos, and I think it's almost done now. But I was I was doing some uh, videos, and I had to encode them, and I used the command line to do that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's possible to do it in Windows with the command line as well, but it's just it's not as natural, and, and I, I don't think it's very easy to get those packages that run in the command line, but. You know, I had this conversation where people were trying to defend Windows by saying, oh, you could do this in Windows as well, the command line stuff. And I'm sure that they can, but those pieces of software which run in the command line, they are easier to get to install on Linux, especially if you use a Debian-type system or even an RPM-based system. So, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's just the reason I use Linux. It's just doing things that the way uh, I... Uh, that I, I, I can work with more efficiently than if I had to use something that might be easier to use or to 
grasp like you know a GUI thing but then I would have to like click 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 like 30 times and come every few minutes to do something uh, which uh, I wouldn't want to do that so that's uh well, just briefly going back to the mention of Fedora, because that brings us on to our next uh, next piece of news, and it's just a happy piece of news, actually, uh, but it brings us on to that very nicely. Um, Fedora, uh, you asked me whether I liked it and um, what I thought of it. it. That's really, two for me, two different questions. Do I think Fedora is a great distro? Yes, I do. Um, I know many people who've used it for a very long time and have nothing but praise. It's a library, using it now. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you preempted me. But... The, what I don't like, I don't like GNOME 3. Um, and I had, I had a chance to have a brief look at it. And I'm sorry, but it's convinced me that once the facility to remove to classic GNOME, um, is removed or obsolete or just, just phased out, I will not be sticking with GNOME they and I'll be. Will, they probably will merge things. That's the way the, the KDE 4 did. So they will ensure that in KDE, not, that in GNOME 3, uh, 3.3 to 3.2, uh, you will be able to do things the way you did with the old GNOME, and maybe you will have a secret kind of special button that lets you just kind of uh, adjust your seat the way that you want to behave. But but then the question is, why didn't I like it? Was there anything wrong with it? Well, no. I, I, I'd read different reports from various people that X didn't work, Y didn't work, this froze, that broke. I didn't have any problems like that. The reason I disliked GNOME was purely because it reminded me too much of my mobile phone. Now, my Android is a fant- my Android on mobile is fantastic. It's really intuitive. It's very simple to get my tasks done. I even took it one holiday uh, last year and was using it to chat in IRC, post um, and post blog posts at the same time. Um, absolutely fantastic and something I never dreamed I'd be doing on a on the tiny screen of a um, HTC Desire. Um, but when I get to home and I'm sat behind my desk and I'm looking at my monitor, which is I'm guessing 20, 22 odd inches uh, monitor. I don't want to be looking at what, to me, looks like a mobile phone user interface. And the whole thing just seems very cushioned and very um, dis- detracted from the core operating system. I don't really know how to put it into words, but I felt cushions between myself and the computer, and it felt very, very mobile phone ish, is the best way I can describe it. And so, no, I didn't like it. Um, there is a new uh, headline. I stare at the moment. Uh, it says Fedora and laptops, uh, only a brief look, and, and recently, uh, that, you know, that's, that's just links with over the weekend, but mm. uh, going back about a week, I, I do think that they try and target increasingly devices. Uh, you do realize this is a bigger market than desktops now. If you combine the uh, tablets and phones and things, it's, it's actually more sales than, uh, by far more sales than desktops, and I think they also realize that this is where they don't have to go through the OEM channel, which is basically corrupted in the sense that they have all the, what's called the crepware and the uh, deals with Microsoft, like, you know, you have to buy every, you have to install Windows in every single thing, and to buy the license for Microsoft to every single computer, otherwise you don't get a discount, which basically is an illegal uh, monopoly abuse. Uh, as if where why it's not being punished for I don't know for sure but people do complain about it. Uh, the um, so, so so basically they they do have to try and approach a a new market. The fact that uh, Ubuntu is moving in the same direction and then trying to uh, have this uh, what's it called netbook remix or something like that and now it's just combined uh, and unified in a sense with Unity. So they do try and go with the simpler. Uh, approach as a at least as an well, option or now here's the, here's the thing because with um with going through I can see how it can be um, a very appealing to new users or people that use the computer very casually I, I can see that but the strange thing is I decide uh, how how accepted something would be with a new user by the reaction I get from my uh, my good lady wife she doesn't have the time or interest to sit uh, and fiddle on with uh, a machine and work out where a certain option is in the menu bar. She wants to just sit down and use it. And um, she's got a Mac, and I've said before, she's never had any issues with that Mac. Um, now, she didn't like uh, the GNOME 3 shell at all. But, however, she did like, very much so, Unity. Now, I tested Unity for, I think, a week and a half uh, on the main rig, um, which is the sort of main family computer. And I must admit, 
um, cushioning aside, I did actually find it quite good. Um, I was quite productive with it. I could uh, access what I needed to access very, very quickly. It's not as good as my own personal setup, but then to be fair, the way I set my desktop up is something I've been used to for years and years. So, of, of course, I'm going to be more productive with that. Um, but. Sh-